All right, everybody, this is a video on the Fisher exact test. Uh, many times it's just called the Fisher test. This is going to be used when you have a contingency table, typically a two by two table. Um, so our example for today will be a table talking about smoking and cancer. So here we have smoking, here we have non-smoking, here we have cancer, and here we have non-cancer. The numbers I'm going to put in here are totally made up. I have a feeling that they're probably close to what you'd get, but I've made them up completely. So disregard any outcome we get from these. So here what I'm saying is we have 10 smokers who had cancer, and we're going to assume it's lung cancer. Um, we had two non-smokers who also had lung cancer. We had four smokers who did not have lung cancer. And we had eight non-smokers who also did not have cancer. If we run our totals, you got 14 in the first column, you got 10 in the second column, you got 12 in the first row, and 12 in the second row. The, very, the total number of people we had, 24. So what this Fisher test is gonna do is answer the question of how likely were we to get this extreme of an out outcome or more extreme. So the idea being, if there's no relationship between smoking and non-smoking, these numbers would be relatively equal for the cancers. So maybe six and six or something like that. Um, for non-cancer, non it'd be also about six and six. Whereas clearly you can see there's some discrepancy there. You got more smokers who have cancer, less non-smokers who have cancer and vice versa. So the, the formula for the Fisher test is fairly ridiculous looking, but it's gonna be row one, factorial times row two factorial times column one factorial times column two factorial. That's the numerator. In the denominator, you're going to have the total number of participants factorial uh, multiplied by A factorial, where A is a cell. It's in fact cell one one. Uh, B is the cell here, C is the cell here, and D is the cell here. And they're going to have A factorial, B factorial, C factorial, and D factorial. So this is your formula. From a formula standpoint, I think this is a pretty cool looking, neat um, formula. The fact that it can all be fit into all these nice factori factorials, everything looks great. But from the outside, outside of the actual formula, it looks a little ridiculous. So what I want to explain is what this is actually telling you. So if we move down a little bit here, what you're trying to figure out is how many ways can you get cell A from column 1? So how many ways can you kind of um, mash these, how many combinations can you put together with these 14 people that make it where you have 10 people being in the cancerous position? Multiplied by how many ways can you take cell B out of the second column, meaning how many ways can you get two people that also had cancer from the second column? And you're going to divide that or compare that outcome to how many ways can you get row one, which is the cancerous row out of your total number? So basically you're trying to figure out how many, how many ways can you get this exact value where you have 10 smokers who got cancer, two non-smokers who got cancer versus the total number of ways that you could essentially get 12 total people regardless of smoking um, uh, preference out of the total 24, okay? So this is going to break down into what these um, combinations are actually telling you. Uh, so if we look at this first one here, it's C1, and I'm going to write, I'm, we're going to give ourselves some space here, C1 over A. Okay, so just looking at our numbers, we have 10 in A and we have 14 in the total column. The formula for a combination is going to be the top number here, so C1 factorial over a factorial times C1 minus A factorial. So basically, um, how many ways can you get C1 and you're kind of in a way controlling for um, cell A at the bottom and cell C at the bottom. Right, and I have another video kind of diving into that. So if we look at this, C1 is again, column one is 14, will look like this. C1 factorial is gonna be 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10, times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Okay, that's a, oop, let me draw a straighter line there. There we go. And then you're going to have A factorial, and I'm going to line them up, where A is, looking at our table, 10. 
you have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And if you look closely, the next number in this denominator is C1 minus A. Well, column 1 minus A, 14 minus 10 is 4. That's C. So what I'm going to do is actually just cancel that out. And we're going to write C factorial right there. Okay. And I'm going to put that over here just to kind of save space. So C factorial is 4, 3, 2, 1. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Well, very easily we can cancel out these 10 through 1s. And we're left with these values here and this kind of extra. In the other video that I mentioned, I cover combinations versus permutations. What this is doing is controlling for any duplicates. Okay, So we don't care whether smoker number one gets cancer position number one or cancer position number 10. No matter what combination that has smoker one in it, they're going to be counted the same. So this uh, fancy little factorial that's added on, or the C1 minus A, or what turned into C factorial, um, that is kind of your control for duplications. And that's what, what gets left here. So we're going to box off this because we're going to come back to it. But that's what that piece of the numerator is telling you. Okay, so if we go to the other piece of the numerator, let's move that out. Again, you have C2, B. So this is asking how many ways can we pull B in this fashion from C2. And again, the formula for that is going to be C2 factorial over B factorial times C2 minus B factorial. Well, going back, we look at what is, okay, C2 is 10. B is 2. C2 minus B, 10 minus 2 is 8. Well, that's just D, right? So we're going to put D right there. Okay, and we'll cross that out. Okay, and we're going to box off that. Well, if we look at this, well, actually, let's, let's go through the whole thing first, and then we're going to combine these. Okay, and the very last one is going to be right here. And again, that's the total number, uh, and how many, time, how many ways can we get row 1 from that? So that's going to be n factorial at the top. You're going to have row 1. Oop, let me straighten that up. Factorial multiplied by n minus row 1 factorial. Well, the total number subtracting the first row will just leave us with the second row, right? Because we only have two rows. So I can just replace that. So look, we got this nice combination of all these factorials. So now, if we zoom out, let's combine our list here now. So we have C1 factorial over A1, A factorial times C factorial. And then we bring this one over and we get multiplied by C2 factorial over B factorial times D factorial. All right. Well, look at that. You have C1 times C2. So you have this piece right here. And you have A, B, C, D. So you have this piece right here. So we have most of that formula now. Well, let's look at this one. We are dividing by, right here, this value. And whenever you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the inverse of that fraction. So we can actually take R1 and R2 to the top, R1 factorial times R2 factorial, and that's divided by N factorial. If we clean this up, let's actually put it in the order of our original formula. We have R1, R2. So R1 R oh, factorial times R2 factorial. We have C1, C2. C1 factorial, D, oh, not D, C2. And that's divided by, we're going to put N first, because that's what we have right here. So we have N factorial times A factorial, B factorial, C factorial, D factorial. So here we go. We've made our original formula. And that's all from the idea that we're trying to calculate how many ways can we get cell A out of column 1 in combination with how many ways we can get cell B out of column 2 compared to how many ways can we get all of row 1 regardless of smoking uh, habit. Okay, so that's the idea. This is the formula you're left with. Okay, so I hope that at least makes you understand what you're kind of getting at with the formula. And then what's very nice about this is you can actually do this very quickly in Python. Okay, so what we have within the SciPy library, there's a module called stats, 
and we're going to import stats from SciPy, so you can just write it in that fashion. We're also going to import NumPy, and when you write as uh, something, it just replaces any time I put NP with NumPy. So, cause, and then we're importing that because we want an NP array, a NumPy array. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. And then here, this text is just kind of explaining what this table is, it means. Column 1 is going to be your smoking column. Column 2 is going to be your non-smoking column. Row 1 is your cancer problem uh, column, excuse me, and row 2 is your non-cancer uh, row. Um, so if you come back here, uh, that's exactly what we have here. We have smoking as row 1, excuse me, column 1, non-smoking as column 2, row 1 as, um, or cancer as row 1, non-cancer as row 2. All right, and the numbers are the same. So 10 in the upper left, 2 in the upper right, 4 in the lower left, and 8 in the lower right. And we go ahead, whenever you write an array and it's two-dimensional, you're going to have to have a bracket around the two dimensions and then a bracket between each row. So I'll go ahead and run that, and we can print the table, and you get, there's your, your table right there. To run the actual test, you just call the stats module, you call the Fisher underscore exact uh, function, and you import your NumPy array, in our case it's a two-dimensional array. And I went ahead and printed the output. The output is a p-value and an odds ratio. Okay, so what you get is the second value is going to be your p-value, the first value is your odds ratio. The p-value is pretty straightforward and, and widely used. You, anything under uh, 0 0.05 typically means you're going to uh, reject the null hypothesis because it's very unlikely that the results were by chance. And the odds ratio is a little bit trickier and less used, but it's indicating the strength and direction of the relationship, so of the relationship between smoking and cancer. One would be considered neutral. If you're above one, it's going to be a positive relationship. Uh, the more above one, the, the, more, the larger the relationship is. If you're under one, uh, it means that it's a negative relationship. So basically, if the, in this case, it would be that if it's a negative, or sorry, if it's like 0.5, it would say that the more you smoke, the less likely you are to get cancer. Um, and then in our case, we got 10. So with my fake numbers, it's very likely that there's a, a strong relationship between smoking and cancer. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. And uh, I hope the, I, I was able to explain the Fisher test uh, as well as how to utilize it in Python.